Shell Monday friends, wonderful to be with you again today and as we are doing the program from the studio here in the hills of Jerusalem. And you know something which is amazing this year is the jubilee of the city of Jerusalem. 50 years of reunification, <laughs> this is the long name, and it's just amazing because um, Israel was attacked and they had to go to war. This was a six day war and now it's the jubilee and the Jewish people are coming back from all around the world and you will have a surprise uh, today in the studio because Dr. Eli comes from an amazing country far away from Israel and now he's, he, he made Aliyah and he's in this land again. And with all these things that are happening, Jewish people coming back in the land, they are digging, they are finding facts and, and there is really like a renewal, a revival of the scriptures and, and really helping also the Christian to really reconnect with Jesus, which was a Jewish rabbi, as we can say. And Dr. Eli sometimes called him the Jewish Christ, the Jewish Christ. And um, so we're going to speak about all these things. And it's very exciting, you know, I think there is really a new movement. Like in 1967, we had the, the movement like the renewal charismatic and the Holy Spirit was moving in, in all around the world. And I really think that now, after the 50 years of uh, the reunification of Jerusalem, there is a new move of the Word of God really connected with the land. So thank you, Dr. Eli, for coming today in the studio. This is Dr. Eli Lizorkin Eisenberg and he's coming uh, in the studio speaking about the study, the Israel Study Center. And uh, he, he wrote also a wonderful book, which is called The Jewish Gospel of John, which is again very interesting for you to be able to dig. And you say that you, we can also, people can download it. They can download it for free mm -hmm. at uh, jewishgospelofjohn.com. Wonderful. That's jewishgospelofjohn.com. So you see from all around the world, you can connect with Israel and discover some great stories because you really dig with the land, with the culture. And I think this is a new discovery for the Christian and is a movement. I really think is a new movement, which is really start tiny, tiny, but really growing and, and goes all around the world. And something that I've learned is like Jerusalem is obviously the capital of your country. Of, for the Jewish people, but I think it's more than that. It's also the eternal capital and the international capital for the believers who believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and, J and Jacob. So, Dr. Sorry, it's a long introduction, but I want to tell you because Dr. Eli has a Master of Divinity degree in Christian theology. He has also a Master Philosophy call philosophical degree in the Bible interpretation and is also a PhD degree in ancient culture from Stellenbosch University. Uh, so it's great to see that you study so many cultures. And now let us start with uh, this study, this Israel study center that you have done, which can connect people from all around the world to study the Bible. Yeah, well, Israel Study Center is an online school of continual education mm -hmm. uh, that concentrates on bringing together some of the best insights from the field of the Jewish studies mm -hmm. that is particularly uh, relevant to the modern Christ followers. This is what we do. We believe that the Bible does not need to be rewritten, mm -hmm. but we believe that the Bible needs needs to be reread. Yes, I love this. And so, um, and so, what we do is we continually bring people through study of the context, culture, and the language back to the original meaning of the uh, both Hebrew Bible and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Very good. So. Could you give us a few topics that you are touching? In sure. Um, uh, we have a program, a certificate program in Jewish context and culture. It includes seven different courses. Some of the most popular ones are the, um, the Book of Revelation in Jewish context. Okay. 
Okay. It's a truly unique course where we go uh, and study the book of Revelation, not in simply a futuristic manner, uh, but uh, we're seeking to understand how would the letter of Revelation be understood by the uh, recipients, the original recipients, the Jewish and Gentile followers of the Jewish Christ in the first century. There's so many things um, in the book of Revelation are simply missed out because it is, the, the book is read as, it, as if it was written for the people in the 21st century somewhere in the United States. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it, it, it is not so. It was written for a different group of people at a different time. And unless we go back in time and uh, seek to understand how that would work, um, we would not, we would not grasp the original message of the book of Revelation. You if, need to know a lot of the background of, the, yeah, of uh, the Hebrew scriptures, isn't it? Well, it's not, it's background of the Hebrew scriptures, mm-hmm. it's the language, but it's also the culture of the first century because this is where, where it was written. Mm-hmm. Uh, basically, uh, a major problem in the normal traditional interpretation mm-hmm. of the book of Revelation is the book of Revelation is um, not considered, not studied together with the book of Acts and it's not studied together with the Pauline letters. Mm -hmm. And we, what we do is we bring those studies together. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'll give you one concrete example. Um, In the book of Revelation, there's this group of people Mm -hmm. that that Jesus, Yeshua, uh, uh, hates. And they, well, he hates their deeds, and those are the Nicolaitans. Mm-hmm. And when you start looking in the commentaries, you'll see that no one has the foggiest idea who these people are, mm-hmm. but people are sounding very sure that this is, has to do with the Nicholas, who allegedly kind of went bad later mm-hmm. on. Um, but I think that Nicholas is not uh, being served justice. Mm-hmm. I think he, he should be considered innocent until proven guilty. Um, uh, it is far more likely that the, that the word Nicolaitans is actually not a Greek word, but th- it is either Hebrew or Aramaic word. It's actually uh, an expression. So if you say in Aramaic, let us eat, Nikala, and then you add a Greek plural ending, you're going to get the word for the Nicolaitans. Mm-hmm. Now, if you don't separate it from the book of Acts, if you don't separate it from the Pauline epistles, you will, you will see how that works together, that you had people who were under the pressures of the Roman perse- governmental persecution. Mm-hmm. Un- under those pressures were um, struggled, especially if they were Gentile followers of the, of the Jewish Christ. Uh, they struggled how to make life under the persecution and pressures of the Roman Empire. And one of the things that they also were... Also in Israel or just all um, around the well, Roman... Uh, okay. Well, I mean, the letters were written to a place that the today West. is in the modern Turkey. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, every single one of those cities that is addressed is a city with a large Jewish population. So those were not, uh, quote-unquote, Christian churches. They were um, uh, assemblies. Mm-hmm. That's what ecclesia means. Mm-hmm. Uh, they were assemblies um, worshiping God of Israel uh, through the Jewish Christ uh, where there were some Jewish and, and also Gentile uh, members of those groups. But especially the Gentile members of the groups were, uh, were struggling with how they can survive in the Roman Empire because the Jerusalem meeting or commonly known as Jerusalem Council described in Acts 15 had forbidden um, well, actually, not it, the, well. No, had had issued a statement mm-hmm. that, in accordance to the laws applicable uh, in the book of Leviticus to the sojourners with Israel, Gentile followers of the Jewish Christ must not partake foods that are sacrificed to the Roman gods, mm-hmm. and this was a major issue. So, um, so Nicola let us eat should be looked at in this context. Another example, so that just put a little uh, so meat on this. Yeah, mm-hmm. go ahead. So you mean that the people, these people were the ones who were trying to follow the Jewish? No, 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 no. The, Nic- the Nicolaitans mm-hmm. are the people that actually wanted to break out from being part of this Jewish coalition of the willing. They were people that actually were saying, 
Never mind what the Leviticus says to the sojourners with Israel. Never mind what the Jerusalem meeting had affirmed Mm -hmm. about that. We will do our own thing. We can do this and also be a happy uh, patriotic, which meant at the time idol worshiping part of the Roman Empire. Those are the things that Jewish Messiah hated. Yeah, which is interesting. So we go back to he loves the Torah, he loves he loves the Word of God that we have to follow because it's good for us, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, most of the people do think that do think of Jesus as a Christian, mm-hmm. as Apostle Paul as a Christian, mm-hmm. and this is where all the problems begin. Um, neither Jesus nor Apostle Paul was a Christian, and so I mean, uh, the assembly didn't have trouble to have Jews and Christians together. I mean, believers, Jewish people from the ethnic of being Jewish but they were adding the believers who wanted to believe in the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they had no problem to be together, were they? Uh, Not only that they didn't have a problem to to be together, but Apostle Saul Paul, or Shaul Paulus, he he issued a very, very interesting rule that overwhelming majority of the modern Christ followers have never heard about. Mm -hmm. And actually, when I speak in the larger assemblies, I always ask this question. Can someone name me a rule uh, that Apostle Paul set forth in all of his assemblies? Mm -hmm. And um, I think from maybe 50 times that I asked this question, Mm -hmm. only one time I received the correct answer. Mm -hmm. And the answer is uh, that, that what Apostle Paul wrote is that if God had called you while you were already circumcised, you should remain circumcised. Now, the circumcision for Paul is a code word for um, not just being part of the Jewish coalition, but being a Jew, a Judean in every single way. Uh, But if you, but then he writes, but if God called you when you were not circumcised, remain this way. This is the rule that I have set in all of my assemblies, Paul said. Now, what is the problem? Why was Paul, who, according to his own words, was a Pharisee, and the son of the Pharisees after he had met uh, the reason Christ Jesus. Why is it that after all of this happened and he claims that he's a Pharisee, he would be against the proselyte conversion? Why would he be against it? Why does he want the nations stay the nations? Why does he want the Jews to stay Jews while worshiping God of Israel through Jewish That's Christ? That's it. This was the right thing because God called the nation of the nation of of Israel to be a light for the nations and to be something. But all of us who are not Jewish, we still have to be who we are. This is a thing which is very important. But, but yes, but uh, I'm We're asking believing, right. Uh, yeah. But I'm asking this question, mm-hmm. and I uh, I didn't come up with with the question and the answer by myself. Mm-hmm. I really stand on the shoulders of others that then have done this research. Mm-hmm. It's important to say, mm-hmm. but. Um, this particular point, I want to I want to uh, sort of summarize that uh, that um, the reason that the Pharisee apostle Paul mm-hmm. did not want the nations to become Jews mm-hmm. is because in his mind the great God of Israel mm-hmm. um, his greatness will be lessened if the Gentiles become Jews. Then he would simply be and only be the God of the Jews. Mm-hmm. You know, the I, book I of totally, Romans, he, I he says, I want him to be the God of the Jews that's and the God it, of the nations that's also. It, that's it. And this, yeah. is, this is, I think, something that we really need to grasp as, as Christian, I believe, is that there is a place for Israel, there is a place for the nations, which is all in the Hebrew uh, scriptures written again, like his house will be a house of prayer for all, for all nations. the nations. Yeah. So, he needs to have all the nations, and, and when you see the character of God, He loves us to be different. Like we forgot to say, you made Aliyah from Uzbekistan. I was born in Uzbekistan, but mm-hmm. I made Aliyah from the United States. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's amazing to see that you are coming from like far away, and yeah, now you are in Israel. And for the people to know these kind of things, to see the Jewish people coming back, you know, sometimes we can take it just for granted, but I think it's the most amazing miracle in front of our eyes. Uh, and it's, it's happening 
now in, in, this, uh, in this time where we are living. Now, I want also to ask you something because you say like the study center, there is people, oh, you told me before the, the program that there was people, I was very keen to know how many people are coming and from how many nations. Yeah, right. um, well, we have students uh, because we're completely online mm -hmm. and it's done through the sort of uh, one click, very simple video conferencing technology, very, very simple. We have students who are 25 years old and we have students who are 85 years old. Mm -hmm. And the last time we counted, they come from 40 different countries of the world. So uh, you asked me before uh, what kind of courses we have. So the Book of Revelation Jewish Context is one. Um, the Stories of Jewish Christ is another course. Basically, the course that recovers the Jewishness of all four Gospels. That's a, mm -hmm. and it should be an interview on its own as wh why Gospel of Luke should be also considered uh, uh, a, Jew uh, a Gospel under the Jewish umbrella. Mm -hmm. But um, we also have a course that's called Our Hebrew Fathers. I teach also a, a devotional Torah study that's called uh, Hebrew Bible with Dr. Eli. Mm -hmm. So, and um, people from all around the world join in and what we do there is we, we follow the, the synagogal Torah reading. Mm -hmm. We go under the text of the translation to see some incredible things that we just cannot see, uh, cannot see uh, in, in translation, yeah. right? Then we interact with the writings uh, of Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, mm -hmm. who I consider one of the uh, one of the greatest rabbis alive today. Mm -hmm. Certainly I learn from him all the time. And then we bring uh, what I call the New Testament reflection. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs is, uh, oh, he was the head rabbi of uh, the, the... Official title, I believe, was the, the, uh, chief, the rabbi chief rabbi of the... Of the uh, uh, of the British of Empire, I think <laughs> this is what this is the formal title. But uh, in any ways, he's a, he's definitely definitely a great teacher, yes. great teacher. Yes. Now the kind of things that we learn there is, I'll mm -hmm. give you just one example. Mm -hmm. The very famous verse that all of Christians know by heart: "Those who will bless you, I will bless; mm -hmm. those who will curse you, I will curse." Mm -hmm. uh, uh, most people don't realize that, that there's two completely different words in Hebrew for the curse. One word for the curse is the word that basically the meaning of that word is, is when you belittle someone, when you dishonor someone, when you make light of someone that you should consider as heavy. But the second word for curse uh, is the word that has a completely different root and it means something like, I will utterly destroy. So if you go under the translation, then uh, what is lost in translation, the force, the power of Hebrew under the English mm -hmm. becomes evident because then you should understand this verse a bit different. I will bless those who bless you, but those who belittle you, I will utterly destroy. Oh, so it's two, it's two, two completely different oh words. Most people don't know. Okay. Most people don't know. Okay, no, we don't. I didn't know. You, you see, should become a student I, at Israel Study Center. I know. I know. You see, friends, it's so wonderful coming from Israel, and thank you, Dr. E, for that. There is, we have the precious nuggets, it's more even than nuggets, it's precious stones that we are digging here in the land and like with this study center, Israel study center, you are going all around the world. This is the thing, this is Isaiah 2 and this is the time, I, I really think, and I'm saying it again, we are in a new movement where the scriptures is open and like the Jewish people are not keeping it anymore for themselves, but they are giving it for the nations and we can be so stronger in our faith and know our God, know the heart of our God much stronger, which makes us being able to live a hopefully happier life. Look, there is uh, so many things that the center does. It contributes, for example, to the Jewish-Christian relations dialogue, mm -hmm. because um, if uh, Christians simply read uh, the Bible as if it was written for to today, 21st century, westernized, 
or perhaps not westernized or Christians, or and just for them, yeah. um, they would oftentimes develop a sort of an attitude of condescension towards the Jewish people. Uh, very often I hear things like, why don't they just accept Jesus? Why they, you know, and there is a, uh, now this is not certainly not all Christians, mm -hmm. but uh, many, very often there is a great disrespect for Judaism. There is a great disrespect for the Jewish people and what our center does, it establishes the discussion mm -hmm. between Jews and Christians. Mm -hmm. And those who are like myself, I found uh, between those borderlines, mm -hmm. but it establishes this conversation and it instills in uh, mostly Christians because mm -hmm. m overwhelming majority of our students are um, modern Christ followers mm -hmm. uh, from, from the Gentile side, mm -hmm. it establishes in the among Gentile followers of the Jewish Christ, respect yeah. of the Jewish culture, Jewish history, Jewish language, and therefore the Jewish people. Mm -hmm. And the conversation can only start there. Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think the basic foundation, and we say it many times, is respect yes. of, of each other. This is very interesting. I think one thing that I've learned with my husband is like with the Jewish people, you can carry on learning all your life. And I think something is very important about that is uh, Rabbi Hillel, and I love you, you were quoting him, who say, never say I will study when I have the time because you may never have the time to study. You have to take the time for doing that. And again, with, with your study center, can you explain a bit how it works if people are interested um, to do it? It, 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 it works in a actually very, very simple way, even though it's modern in the sense that it's carried over through the means of very simple video conferencing technology. Um, it is in some way very old fashioned because you essentially meet in a virtual room um, and you talk to a live person. There is a, pre there is a PowerPointed presentation. You can raise a hand and ask a question and make a comment and participate. Uh, and um, it's, it takes about 90 minutes. It's once a week. So um, there are many busy people, but what, uh, if they are uh, truly serious about recovering the original uh, meaning of the Holy Bible, both in the Hebrew Bible and in the New Testament, um, I think that a program like ours is a must mm -hmm. because then if they do it, and by the way, they can take one course under three months. Mm -hmm. And if they do that, it will really revolutionize their, their ability yeah, to Bible, mm -hmm. uh, to read the Bible, and to teach the Bible. Because mm -hmm. most of our students actually um, teach Bible studies. Many of them are pastors. There's many who are professors of Christian seminaries as well. Mm -hmm. So our, um, our approach is to, is to um, have a, bring a university level uh, material, groundbreaking material, relevant to modern, uh, modern Christ followers. But the key is that we do it in a, a simple, plain language. So we have people who, ha who may not have graduated from, from a college and those who have advanced degrees in the same class mm -hmm. are enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Very good. This is wonderful. Just one little thing. Do you do courses about the Hebrew language too? Um, we do not teach grammar mm -hmm. at Israel Study Center because grammar takes years mm -hmm. uh, to, and uh, we do shorter courses mm -hmm. and so for example our course on our Hebrew fathers uh, hel helps people to kind of go under the translation. We do teach them alphabet and give, provide them tools within which in one day they can start pronouncing Hebrew words. Um, but but we don't concentrate on grammar. We allow people to have uh, incredible biblical Hebrew insights That's it. You to give them a taste. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they want to take it further, mm -hmm. then they can take it further. Very good, wonderful. So you were telling me you have amazing people who come from Indonesia. You have people yeah. like things, I mean, some countries can't have Christian things, but now you can. There's be people from uh, 40 different countries, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. Okay, Dr. Eli, thank you. The time is already uh, just flew. And I hope that you enjoyed this uh, program. And again, you can go on the website of Israel Study Center and you can discover and have your own trip of learning 
what's happening here in Israel and learning about the scriptures, about the Bible and uh, the culture also of uh, the Bible. From me and from Dr. Eli, bye. Shalom, dear friends. Today we are going to look at a new name in Hebrew and is the word De, which is Yom in Ivrit. And the day will be Hayom. And the day starts in the evening, like exactly like in Genesis 1, we can see God created the heaven and the earth. And verse 5, it was evening and it was morning. And this was the first day the very first day of the universe. Now, we can look at few names. Uh, we look at Yom, we saw like Hayom is the day, and we, there is another one interesting, Kol Yom, and Kol Yom means every day. I'm singing every day, Kol Yom. And uh, there is another one very similar, but we mean just very different, is Kol Hayom. It means I'm singing and I'm working all day. Call Hayom all day. And there is one thing that we say every day is Yom Tov, which means may your day be full of goodness. And the last one to greet somebody for his birthday is Yom Uledet Sameyar. Yom Uledet Sameyar. And from me today, bye and see you next week. Dr. Eli, thank you again for coming and speaking about the Israel Study Center. This is wonderful to be able to hear about this amazing center where you can learn more about the Bible and connect with the people of Israel, with the land and with the language. And from me and from Dr. Eli, bye for now.